lecture on the book of Daniel. The main text starts from Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. During the last lecture, we studied Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. God planned the last part of the Old Testament into 70 weeks. In other words, He divided this 70 week period into three parts. First, seven weeks. Second, 62 weeks. Third, one week. Seven weeks equal to 49 days. Based on Ezekiel chapter 4, 6, one week equals to one year. So the first section became 49 years. The second part, 400 years. The last section, um, seven years. This began from 457 BC. If you calculate for, from 457 BC to the baptism of Christ, it is 49 years plus 434 years. Four eighty-three years in total. So historically, the time period was from 457 BC uh, to 60 or 26 AD. So it's up to 26 AD. During that time, Jesus was baptized. He was born in 4 BC. Jesus was baptized around 26 AD. That is when he became approximately 30 years old. We went over verse 24. The verse talks about the coming of the Anointed One, the Holy One. Through the coming of the Messiah, the problem of sin is solved. He makes an end of sin. He makes atonement for iniquity. Jesus brings in everlasting righteousness. All the visions and prophecies from the Old Testament are fulfilled through Christ. Through Jesus, everything is accomplished. He completes all things. Read verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem to the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks. Then for sixty-two weeks it shall be built again with squares and moat, but in a troubled time. When did the seventy weeks begin? It was when God to restore Jerusalem. This refers to the restoration of Jerusalem, not the temple. The return from the second exile happens during this time. This was 457 BC. During that time, Artaxerxes the one commanded people to rebuild Jerusalem. It was his seventh year. Ezra chapter 7, 
verses 1 and 8. Verse 25 talks about an anointed one. This is referring to the Messiah. The word Christ means the anointed one. In Hebrew, it means Messiah. Jesus was anointed during his baptism, baptized when he officially started the work of God. Christ was baptized when he was around 30 years old. It was around 26 AD. Jesus was born in 4 BC. Therefore, this was around the period when Jesus was baptized and officially started the work of God. Let us examine this again. The period began in 457 BC. This was when the Israelites returned from their second exile. It was also the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. From this time period, seven weeks passed by and then 62 weeks. So it became 26 AD after seven weeks and 62 weeks. Jesus was around this time. This was 26 AD. Jesus was born in 4 BC. Jesus began the work of God around this time. For three years, Jesus continued the work of God. Then he died on the cross around 30 AD. Stephen was mur martyred after three and one half years. One week ended around this time. It is written in verse 25, to the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks, then for sixty-two weeks. Based on Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 6, one week is calculated as one year. The sum of seven weeks and 62 weeks is 483 years. This was 26 AD. During that time, Jesus was baptized. After that, we have to consider one week. Jesus died on the cross on 30 AD. Jesus did the work of God for three years. He spread the gospel. It is clear in the end of verse 25, it shall be built again, but in a troubled time. During the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, the Israelites suffered because of many other nations. They were oppressed. Nehemiah chapter 4, 1, chapter 6, verse 1, chapter 9, verse 36. Next, there will be squares and moats. This is referring to the inner part of Jerusalem. Moat indicates
Perimeter Jerusalem. People dug holes to prevent enemies from invading Jerusalem. After coming back from the exile, the Israelites suffered in various ways in order to re rebuild Jerusalem. Nevertheless, Jerusalem was rebuilt. Verse 26 And after the 62 weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end shall come with the flood, and to the end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed. Verse 26 states that after the 62 weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing. This happened not right after 62 weeks, but after three and one half years. The death of Jesus was going to take place. Jesus died on the cross around 30 AD. If you observe the last part of the chart, after 62 weeks, around 3 or 30 AD, Jesus died on the cross. After 62 weeks, in 30 AD, Jesus died on the cross. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 8. It says, The people of the prince who is to come. Who is this prince? This is referring to the Antichrist. Historically, it was the Roman general Titus. Under the command of Titus, the Roman army destroyed Jerusalem. In 70 AD, Titus invaded Jerusalem. The war continued on for a year. Many people died during this war. Because Jerusalem was under siege, many people faced death and were sold as prisoners. Or prisoners. Many people died on the cross. The Romans killed millions of people and sold more than 30,000 people as prisoners. After such trials, Jerusalem was ruined. Historically, people of the prince refers to Titus, the Roman general. This general also symbolizes Antichrist. Through this figure, the city and the same will be It meant the ruin of Jerusalem. Its end shall come with a flood. This meant the end of Jerusalem. The end of Jerusalem will be tragic. To the end, there shall be war. Desolations are decreed. 
through such a war, Jerusalem will be destroyed. In such a manner, in the days of Daniel, such a tragic event in the far future was prophesied. Daniel prophesied the coming of Messiah who will come after 500 years so as to complete salvation. He also prophesied the complete, complete destruction of Jerusalem after the Messiah. The verse isolations are decreed. It points to the immutability of God. This was, punish, this was the punishment of God. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27, chapter 11 verse 36, verse 27. And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and for half of the week he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wings of abomination shall come one who makes desolate, until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. It says in verse 27 that, And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. He refers to the Messiah. The Messiah will come and make a strong covenant. The emphasis is on the work of God or Christ. Many people will participate in salvation through faith in Christ. They will be saved. Therefore, it is clearly stated in the verse that he shall make a strong covenant. Based on the promise of God, people will be saved. For half of the week, he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. Pay careful attention to end sacrifice and offering. This refers to the death of Christ on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Through his death, the sacrifice and offering of the Old Testament were abolished once and for all. Jesus completely made atonement for our sins. The everlasting righteousness of Christ was fully revealed. Therefore, the sacrifice of the Old Testament was abolished. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 8 and 9, chapter 7 verse 1, chapter 9 verses 25 and 26. Christ pays sins with his righteousness. The ritual sacrifice of the Old Testament was abolished. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 18 Let us go back to the chart. Examine the last part. One week was when Jesus was baptized. It was 26 AD. Jesus died on the cross in 30 AD. The death meant the abol abolition of the Old Testament sacrifices and ceremonies. In the middle of one week, in 30 AD, 
through the death of Christ, the sacrifices and ceremonies of atonement ended. Jesus completed our atonement. During the Old Testament era, people sacrificed cows and lambs. By dying on the cross, Jesus made an atoning sacrifice to God. We no longer make sacrifices through killing cows and lambs. We go to God through faith in Christ. As I mentioned earlier, when Jesus died on the cross, the curtain of the temple was torn. In the Old Testament, the high priest, by means of the blood of cows, entered the most holy place once a year. However, such a curtain was torn in two. Now, in the New Testament period, through faith in Christ, we can always confidently go to God. The sins of the Old Testament were abolished for good. Now let us go to the middle of verse 27. And on the wing of abomination shall come one who makes desolate until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. It says, and on the wing of abomination shall come one who makes desolate. This is talking about the three and one half period after the death of Christ. The period up to the dispersion of the believers in Jerusalem and martyrdom of Stephen. This verse also notes that on the wing of abominations shall come. Abomination symbolizes the Antichrist. The Antichrist will persecute the believers. As I noted earlier, the Roman general Titus destroyed Jerusalem. However, Antichrist will face the judgment of God. Verse 27 makes clear that until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator, the plan of God will be accomplished. Jerusalem will be ruined. In the end, however, the desolator will be punished. The Antichrist cannot escape God's judgment. We will now conclude the lecture on Daniel chapter 9. We will now begin the lecture on Daniel chapter 10. The title is Abstinence. First, Daniel understood about the Great War. Verse 1. Second, Daniel mourned and fasted for three weeks. Through three. Third, Daniel fell on his face in deep sleep. Verses 4 through 9. Fourth, the angel helped Daniel to stand up by touching Daniel. Verses 10 through 11. Fifth, the prince of the Persian kingdom delayed God's own messenger for a period of three weeks 
but the archangel Michael came to help. The king of the Persian kingdom delayed God's uh, own messenger for a period of three weeks, but the archangel Michael came to help. Verses 12 through 15. Sixth, one in the likeness of the children of man touched Daniel's lips so Daniel can speak. Verses 16 through 17. Seventh, he strengthens Daniel and helped him understand about the victory. Verses 18 through 21. Read verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was named Belshazzar, and the word, and it was a great. The vision of God was received by Daniel in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia. It was 535 BC. This period was the third year since after the return of the Jewish exiles. Ezra chapter 1 verse 1 King Cyrus freed the Israelites in 500 38 BC. He liberated the Israelites from Babylon. However, Daniel did not return from Babylon at that time. It was a vision about the war. The message was about the Great Tribulation. It was prophesying that the Jewish people would suffer in the future. Fulfilled after 300 years. Verses 2 to 3. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks, verse 3, I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. Daniel prayed for three weeks. Daniel knew about the upcoming great war. He was cautious for three weeks. This war was between the Persian king and the Greek king. Because of the war, Daniel knew that his people will go through trials and sufferings. Daniel had no choice but to mourn since he knew that the Antichrist was stronger than the believers. What can we do when our enemies are stronger than us? Daniel mourned and prayed to God. He ate no delicacies. He did not anoint himself at all. Daniel did not eat meat or wine. In such a way, Daniel mourned and prayed for the kingdom of God. Ezra chapter 1 verses 1 or 4 through 5. After receiving the vision, Daniel earnestly prayed uh, to God. Verse 4. On the 24th day of the first month, 
as I was standing on the bank of the great river. On the 24th or 24th day, Daniel was standing on the bank of the great river. This river refers to the Tigris. Daniel sincerely prayed. We should also pray in such a quiet place. Verse 5 I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a man clothed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Opaz. A man clothed in linen came. He had a belt, belt of fine gold from Upaz, or Upaz around his waist. This heavenly being refers to Christ of the book of Revelation. Christ came as a heavenly being. Revelation chapter 1 verses 13 to 15 Next, linen points to the priestly row of Christ. Exodus chapter 28 verses 3 through, 3 through 5 A belt of fine gold from Opaz refers to the kingship of Christ. His body was like burr in verse 6, it says his body was like gold. This symbolizes the holy body of Christ. It means that Jesus' body is holy. Next, his face was like the appearance of lightning. His eyes were like flaming torches. God discerns our heart and spirit. God knows our heart. He knows everything about us. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 13 God even knows our hidden sins. In addition, His arms and legs were like the glim of burnished bronze. This, meant, or this means that Christ will bring judgment. Isaiah chapter 63 verses 2 through 5 Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 17 The sound of his words like the sounds of a multitude. This symbolizes the authority concerning the word of Christ. God is authoritative. It is powerful. Even the sun will stop rotating through the word of God. God can turn storm into a breeze. He can raise the dead. Everything obeys the word of Christ. Verse 7, And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great trembling fell upon them, and they fled to hide themselves. Only Daniel alone saw the vision. The men who were with Daniel did not see the vision. They tr trembled greatly and fled to hide themselves. Paul saw a great light on the Damascus road. However, the men standing beside him did not see the light. Acts chapter 9 verses 3 through 7. Revelation chapter 1 verse 17. Daniel fell on his face in deep sleep. Through so I was left alone and saw this great vision, and no strength was left in me. My radiant appearance was fearfully changed, and I retained no strength. Then I heard the sound of his words. Daniel was aware that his heart was weak, and 
evil in the presence of God. Daniel knew he was chief of sinners. Thus, Daniel fell on his face. He retained no strength. This means that Daniel became like a corpse. He almost or he was almost dead. Daniel realized his life was meaningless. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 22 J Job chapter 42 verses 5 through 6 Judges chapter 6 verse 22 Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5 Job chapter 42 verses 5 through 6 in verse 9, noted that Daniel into a deep sleep. Daniel was almost dead. He probably experienced extreme fear. However, God encouraged Daniel. Therefore, Daniel fell into a deep sleep. At that moment, through the all-inspiring messenger, God awakened Daniel. He enabled Daniel to stand. The Lord blessed Daniel with this grace. And he gave Daniel comfort and strength. God gave Daniel strength. God provided Daniel with great blessings. Verse 12, Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your, word, your words have been heard. The angel told Daniel not to be afraid. He said, from the first day that heart and, and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard. Daniel wanted to know about the result of the war. Daniel was also concerned about his people. So he put great efforts to understand the will of God. Therefore, God from the first day blessed Daniel with his grace. How are we to fight the good fight? How are we to seek the will of God? Is there a way to walk in the truth? When we humble ourselves and pray to God, God will answer us. We must be able to discern the difference between the work of God and the temptation of Satan. We must be able to identify what is true. Second chapter 11 verse 14, Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 through 23. God answered Daniel's prayer from the first day. Daniel prayed for three weeks. From the first day, God was listening. God listens to our prayer from beginning. Verse 13 The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood with 
will withstood me twenty one days. But Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there. The prince of the kingdom of Persia delayed God's messenger for three weeks. This prince is an agent of Satan. Such an evil force interfered. Four, go to four. When the Israelites attempted to rebuild Jerusalem, they faced human opposition and enmity. At that time, Artaxerxes also interfered. In such a manner, they tried to stop the Israelites from rebuilding Jerusalem. In other words, the king and people interfered with the plan. In this passage, the archangel Michael came. To help the messenger. Through such a help, the angel was finally able to bring the message of encouragement to Daniel. Prince of the Persian Kingdom symbolizes not only our external enemies but also internal foes. These can be regarded as an enemy from the outside, including the people who interfered with the plan to rebuild Jerusalem, as well as Antichrist nations. Such forces all attempt to externally interfere with our plans. Moreover, moreover, we are corrupt internally. We are greedy. Such negative elements hinder us from going to God. Such factors delay God's answer to our prayers. Michael Solve the problem. It became the good news through the help of Michael. Verse 13 and 21. Chapter 20 or 12, verse 1. Therefore, God listens to our prayer from the beginning. Sometimes the answer can be delayed. Nevertheless, we disappear. When we continue to pray, God sends his angels, angels to solve the problem. He answers our prayers. The archangel Michael will solve the problem. We should not just pray once or twice. We must fully repent. Through the strength of God, we must triumph against all forces of evil. We must continually pray. Then God, through His angel, He or will help us. Verse 14 talks about the latter days. The latter days refer to the Messianic period. It is the period when Jesus will come. This happens in the future. Again, it refers to the coming of Christ. Verse 15 when he has spoken to me these words face. After receiving such words, Daniel was dumbfounded. 
On the other hand, he was filled with joy. On the other hand, uh, Daniel was in fear. Verse 16 And behold, one in the likeness of the children of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke. One in the likeness of the children of men, or man, refers to Christ. He is the Messiah. The Lord strengthened Daniel through touching his lips. God was giving him power. He forgave Daniel's sins. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 6. Chapter 6 verse 7. Next, the verse notes that, O oh my Lord, by reason of the vision, pains have come upon me. Daniel was anxious because of his weaknesses in the face of God. Daniel was not able to speak in front of God. How can my Lord's servant talk with my Lord? For now no strength remains in me, and no breath is left in me. Daniel knew he was not worthy enough to speak in the presence of God. Verses 18 through 19 Again, one having the appearance of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O man greatly loved, fear not, peace be with you, be strong and of good courage. And he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said. Verse 18 talks about the one having the appearance of a man. The man symbolizes an angel and Christ. He became our mediator. The angel touched Daniel and strengthened him. In verse 19, it is stated that, Fear not, peace be with you. Be strong and of good courage. God strengthened Daniel. Thus, Daniel was able to deliver the message of God through his strength. Daniel said, I will follow your, your power and grace. Daniel also said, I will deliver uh, your message. Verse 20, Then he said, Do you know why I have come to you? But now I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go out, behold, the prince of Greece will come. Michael said he will fight against the prince of the Persian kingdom. Historically, this means that he will fight against Artaxerxes or Cambys. The prince of the Persian kingdom delayed the messenger for three weeks. Michael will keep on fighting for us. It's not fully over. The spiritual battle continues on. After the prince of the Persian kingdom, the prince of the Greek kingdom will come. The Antichrist power continually arises. New heresies continue on. People create new theologies. New types, types of mysticism take place. We must fight against such evil forces. In such a manner, new prince arises after the prince of Persia. 
when one antichrist force falls, another one appears. Therefore, we always have to stay awake. We must be victorious. God will help. He will help you through His angel. We should not be careless. We must stay awake spiritually through faith. Verse 21 Inscribed in the Book of Truth There is none who contends by my side against these except Michael, your prince. God will fight based on his command. He fulfills what is prophesied in the Bible. Therefore, we must understand the Bible and obey the word of God. Here, we will conclude the 11th lecture on Daniel. Thank you.